we don't live down there in Davis, just right off the interstate? No, uh, you know where P&M Mercury is? Yeah. We're up behind there. Okay. Where Daryl McCurdy lives. Okay. We, or, he's got several different roles in that town. Uh, he used to be the police chief uh, of the mayor. <laughs> now I think he's assistant mayor. He, or yeah, he was assistant mayor. And now he works over at Sulphur, I think, at the uh, Six Stall Center or something like that okay. over there. I ain't hiding from nobody. <laughs> Everybody knows where to find me. You still driving that uh, red avalanche? Didn't you have a red or maroon avalanche? Yeah, it's sitting in my mom's, uh, front of my mom's house. Okay. Why? I just, when I asked today, I was just wondering, I knew you had a Kia, and I knew you had an avalanche. How do you know I have a Kia? I told you I've been looking at this case for four years. I've got a little. I haven't bit. had that kid, but since April. Yeah, you, I knew that you just got it. I didn't know if you still had the avalanche or not. I do. Yeah. I don't have the title to it okay. because the ex girlfriend won't give it to me. Oh, that's that deal. She you promised to tell me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she tell you that? Not that much per se. I just know that you and. And Amber, or, how do I know? You and Amber both try to have the best interest of Kimber, but y'all have some disagreements along the way. And I try to keep my mouth shut quite a bit. So yeah. But I haven't gotten Kimber as much as I probably should. Right. But been trying to help my mom out and. I was having a job for a while, so what? I didn't have time to really get Kimber as much as I should. Gotcha. But when I tried to get her this last time, she wouldn't do it. Gotcha. And we had a verbal agreement that she wouldn't keep her from me. Gotcha. Well, this is me. Um, I'm a, I can tell you I'm a federal agent with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh -huh. and I gave him a business card. Like they do on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of old and beat up. And yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Just like me. But nah. I, I tell you, um, this is pretty much your day to talk to, to Andy and I. Um, I got a call from Jeff Johnson, who I know a little bit of, and uh, he said that he'd been chatting with you, and um, he said that his words, you were seeing kind of the way things were heading and we wanted to get ahead of some of this mess and talk to somebody. Yep. Is that true? Yes, it is. All right. So he gave me your number. I called you, told you it was available for this time. Um, as I said out there in the parking lot, um, I've been conducting investigation on activities related to Joe <coughs> for <coughs> three to four years. So I've been gathering a lot of information, talking to a lot of people throughout that time period. Andy has joined the case with me um, a year or so ago, and together we've been doing that. All that being said, this is your time to talk to us. Your name has come up. We know who you are. Um, you're, whatever you want to talk to us today and tell us, I'll just put one caveat in there just to kind of protect yourself. Well, Tell us whatever you want, but don't but don't lie to us, okay? Because I don't I don't want to see you get yourself in in a jam or anything by providing any false information or something you know to be false. But other than that, it's your table. Well, where do you want me to start? I like to start. Where do you want me to start off? I like to start in the beginning. I like to go back to how you became involved with Joe. And you can give me the Cliff Notes version, and we can go back and ask, kind of fill in some gaps if we have questions. But tell me how you got started in Winnie Wood with Joe and what all you've been doing since. Uh, June 11, 2003. A month out of high school, made a job, and uh, that's how I pretty much got started at the park. Uh, just basically doing whatever was needed done uh, and then 
about a little month or so into me working there. Uh, and at the and when I started, we were on the road doing traveling shows. Uh, and a month or so after, that's when me and Joe started a relationship, and I got kicked out of my girlfriend's house or apartment. And uh, Joe moved me in there for like a day or two, and then kicked me out, and I went to live with my mom. Um, and then uh, he won me back, and then that went on for I don't know a month or so, and then he kicked me out again, and went to live with my mom, and then I went back kind of a glutton for punishment type thing. Uh, but ever since that last time, and I think it might have been 2003, maybe to the early 2004, uh, so I've been at the park ever since and doing everything that was asked and doing everything that needed to be done. Uh, I was a welder, uh, driver, uh, I just had a huge role of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I guess it was 2006 is when we heard about Carol Baskin. Just showed up in a newspaper about the part. And then we didn't really pursue anything, we just thought it was nothing and well I did uh, I guess they were digging into her I don't know I, most of the time I sleep till what 12 o'clock or so and go out and do welding or whatever needs to be done or take care of my gators or whatever um, but until I don't know when it really started 2010, 2011, or something like that. I don't know when the lawsuit started, okay. but uh, all I know is I got dragged into it, and I, I didn't know why. How did you get dragged into it? Um, maybe because I was the VP of the park. I, that's the only thing I knew, but I didn't really know anything about any of it because he was doing all that without me knowing. By drug into it, you mean were you named in the Yes, I was not named okay. in it. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, we just, he started doing the Carol Baskin sagas, and that was when I really started knowing stuff. I mean, I made trips to him in Florida, in Florida, but I didn't really pay any much attention because we were traveling to other sanctuaries and zoos and Florida and they were the ones giving them all the information and stuff uh, and he's there was a lot of people there that were giving him information uh, what kind of information all, all the stuff out of her office she had there was a lady I uh, can't remember her name uh, the only way I remember her is she had a chimp that she was holding for somebody and raising it. Uh, I can't remember her name for nothing. But she was like one of Carol Baskin's best friends. And she uh, like had Xeroxes of all like a lot of stuff at her office and she gave it to Joe and that's that's when the Carol Baskin saga started and I don't know how he got the photo I guess somebody sent him a photo of her and not her but a couple of her employees sitting on the back of a golf cart holding dead rabbits and that's when it really started it was over that photo and then uh, it just, I guess, escalated from there, and that's when he started doing his TV shows and stuff. Uh, 
and I'm sure y'all have watched quite a few of those. Mm -hmm. And you were on a few of them. Yeah, I was on a few of them. Uh, there's there's just so much to talk about. It's not even funny, but um, let's see. We stopped traveling like about 2010 or so, and that's probably about the time that it really started to go uphill with the rant and raving about Carol Baskin. Uh, I was trying to think of there's so much to talk about. Yeah, just take your time, man. There's a lot of uh, information in the process. Um, you were talking about Joe escalating his, is it fair to say, threats? I don't want to put any words in your mouth. There wasn't really any threats that far into it. it it's the threats really probably maybe started um, maybe 2013 or so. I'm, I'm just guessing on that part. Mm -hmm. But uh, he joked around a lot about it. That's the only re how I know about it. I never knew anything about the FBI agent or uh, the other one. I don't know a whole lot, but the guy that uh, was supposedly supposed to go do it never made it to Florida. Never. He only made it to South Carolina because he had a warrant for the rest in South Carolina. I don't know anything about the money, but I was the one that took him down there to get a fake ID. Mm -hmm. And never told me anything about them going down there to do this whole stuff. Uh, but on the way down to get the ID, this guy, I don't know if you know his name or not, but his name is Alan Glover or Glover or something like that. Mm -hmm. He, uh, do you ever see the tattoo on his eye? Mm -hmm. You know what that's for? I don't know what it's typically supposed to mean. Mm -hmm. He's done it. He's told me he's done two people. Now, that kind of didn't set right with me, but. I knew there wasn't something right then, but I wasn't going to sit there and ask questions. Uh, but that's all that I know about that part of it. 